Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a new discovery of literally the hottest planet out there. The planet's so hot that it actually beats many stars in terms of temperature. This planet is known as Kelt 9 b and we're going to talk about this and recreate this in Universe Sandbox. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now the closest simulation we have to Kelt uh, 9b in Universe Sandbox is the one with Jupiter around the sun where it's really really close and as soon as we start the simulation you'll notice that our beautiful Jupiter kind of starts shrinking, disappearing and basically loses a lot of its mass ridiculously fast. In other words, it's super unstable, it's, uh, it's actually kind of difficult to have a planet very close to a star and make it super, super hot. So there, there goes our Jupiter, it's gone. Oh, actually, wait, there's a little chunk of it left here. Oh, yeah, that, that's got to. So, on to our discussion of Kelt 9. So Kelt is actually the name of a telescope. It's a super, super tiny telescope in comparison to some of the larger giants. And it dis it discovered close to about 20 different planets so far. But Kelt 9 is unique in the sense that it's around a very, very hot star. It's a star that's about double the temperature of our sun, which we're going to try to create here by basically increasing the temperature of our sun. Hopefully it doesn't go supernova. It's about 10, over 10,000 degrees Kelvin. It's actually super hot. There, there we go. So we're going to do this to, to our star first. And, um, that particular planet is, uh, well, first of all, it's located really far away from us. It's at about a distance of about 650 light years away. And don't forget, the closest star to us is only about four light years away. And that particular planet takes about 1.5 days to orbit around um, its parent star. Now, we know that um, there are quite a lot of so-called hot Jupiters out there, basically planets that are similar to Jupiter that are very close to their stars, but not many of them are at these ridiculous temperatures. So uh, this particular star, uh, sorry, this particular planet is a gas giant. We're going to actually place one right here and just modify its orbit later. Uh, that orbits around its star uh, every one and a half days and its mass is about 2.8 masses of Jupiter. So let's see what happens when we actually place um, place this planet here. We're going to rename it though. It's just going to be known as Kelt 9b. And uh, let's see what happens to this planet as it orbits around this large star that is going to be also named Kelt 9. And uh, our Jupiter is still there actually, surprisingly. But it's, it's technically now a very interesting looking comet-like object. So you can kind of see that its radius is shrinking and that's probably because it's actually uh, losing mass and I want to see what happens to it in, after a few days of orbit. So let's just run this a little bit longer and let's actually look at its temperature as well. Uh, and the temperature is not very hot, it's only about 2200 degrees Celsius. So that means that this star is not a good representation of what uh, what the system looks like because in reality the temperature of this planet is close to about 4,600 Kelvin or uh, Practically the same temperature as our own Sun. Our Sun is about 5,800 Kelvin. So it's like 40 uh, 500 degrees Celsius hot. So its actual temperature would be This much but it see it doesn't stay at that temperature so that means this is not a not a very good representation so not a good model we need to change the star we need to make this either more massive or maybe actually help it release more energy let's increase its luminosity by about a factor of two we're going to make the star a lot brighter and look at the temperature now all right so the temperature is slowly increasing that's good that's a good sign so this also implies that the star that this uh, planet orbits around is super super powerful it releases a tremendous amount of energy tremendous amount of heat and is making uh the planet 
that orbits around it. Super, super hot. All right, so we're not there yet. Right now we're about five times the luminosity of our sun and let's check the planet again. Temperature of the planet is now 3000 degrees Celsius. So it's actually going to Kelvin. 3400 Kelvin. Now this is kind of already hotter than the previously discovered star known as WASP-33. Uh, previously discovered super hot uh, planet that is. Uh, this was the record holder until we discovered KELT 9b. Now, um, before we actually continue heating it up, and I'm not sure what's going to happen, it might actually disappear completely, but let's briefly talk about some of the cool findings here. So first of all, uh, we know that it's not as dense as Jupiter, so it's actually bigger in size than Jupiter. Basically, it's like an inflated balloon because the heat is making it so, so much hotter than anything else in our solar system. Except, of course, for our sun. And don't forget, that the hottest planet that we have is Venus, and temperature on Venus is only about 500 degrees Kelvin. The temperature here is almost 10 times higher. It's uh, close to 5,000 degrees Kelvin. And uh, the team that, who dis uh, that discovered this uh, planet estimates that it's losing something like 10 million kilograms of mass per second. So I'm not sure if it's going to show here under materials. Yeah, there's mass loss here as well. And so President, this is actually kind of accurate. So this is telling us it's about 19 million kilograms per second, where, uh, whereas the team discovered that it was 10 million kilograms per second. So the mass loss here is ridiculously high. And this suggests that at some point, this planet will either completely disappear if it contains only gas, or will become what's known as a Ketonian planet. Uh, and uh, I've talked about this concept previously, in one of the previous videos that you can check out about Ketonian planets. Basically, it's going to burn away all of the atmosphere, leaving behind just an empty shell of, an, of a core, if there's a core. If there's no core, it's going to disappear completely. But if there is a core, it's going to stay behind. Now, it won't really take very long for this planet to completely disappear because basically the mass loss here is quite dramatic. So in terms of cosmic terms, in the next 200 million years, um, this planet will very likely uh, going to become smaller and smaller and smaller until the star right here expands to the point where this planet might start grazing the surface of the star. And we're going to simulate this in a few seconds because that's going to be the future of the system. But before we do that, let's increase luminosity even higher because we want this to be an ultra, ultra hot planet. Let's make this like seven. Okay, so something just happened. It looked like, oh, okay, well, that's not cool. Uh, yeah, I broke the game a little bit. I unfortunately turned this into a supernova and I think my star is now gone. Well, that was a failure. So you can see how extreme this situation is. It's even impossible to uh, easily recreate in Universe Sandbox. Let's try this again. Let's, let's actually see if we can do this again. And at this point, what I'm doing is I'm actually using Sirius A, uh, a very, very bright, very powerful star that's very close to us, changing its luminosity and seeing if this actually does it a little bit better. And it looks like it might be actually working. So right now the temperature here is kind of pretty high. Let's see if we get to 4,600. We're almost there. Wow, it actually worked. So the luminosity is about 100 times luminosity of the sun. And Kelt-9b, the planet that I was so desperately trying to create, now has the temperature I was looking for. But here's the, here's the thing though. I actually did change its composition a little bit because it was losing way too much mass. So right now, its temperature is pretty much as close to a star as possible. As a matter of fact, it's actually hotter than about 80% of stars we've discovered to date. It's hotter than any brown dwarfs, it's hotter than any red dwarfs. It's even hotter than TRAPPIST-1. TRAPPIST-1 is the star that was discovered relatively recently and created a lot of excitement because there were so many exoplanets around it that were similar to Earth. But here you can see that this is actually a rocky looking uh, gas giant with a bit of an iron core here. If I make this gas gas giant, it's going to start losing way too much mass way too fast. The more gaseous it gets, the more mass it will start losing. And so this suggests that maybe, just maybe, that particular planet does have quite a lot of rock on the inside. Maybe it's not as gas uh, or gaseous as some of the other objects. But let's see. Let's see if this works. We want to make 
make it as similar to Jupiter as possible in terms of composition. Here we go. All right. Well, it's not glowing, which is very interesting, even though its temperature is close to 5,000 degrees Celsius. That's super high. All right, so let's uh, let's make it run a little bit longer and see what happens. So you can see that this planet actually is glowing. That's how hot it is. So hot that it's actually uh, basically creating just as much heat as a small star would. And what's interesting is that it definitely is very star-like in its appearance and its... Uh, amount of energy and amount of uh, heat it releases and it's very likely that pretty much everything on the surface here is just this very unusual plasma-like molten gas so even iron would probably turn into basically atmospheric iron so the atmosphere of this uh, unusual planet probably consists of things like molten or i guess gas form of rock um, different metals and a lot of different really interesting stuff. And things like um, waters and ices that we usually expect from these types of objects probably evaporated a long time ago. So this might be just a big, thick uh, gas giant made up of just rock and iron, which is something more realistic if I do it this way. Iron and rock. And there we go. So maybe this is what Calat 9 b actually consists of. Or possibly something different. But anyway, so that's kind of all we've discovered about this planet so far. We know that it's really hot. It's hotter than the majority of stars. We know that it's very, very unusual. And we know that it definitely uh, has some really interesting things to teach us about the creation and the formation of our universe and of course our solar system. Now I'm gonna see if I can experiment this with, a little, uh, with this a little bit more and maybe change this um, so it starts glowing a little bit more, but for some reason it's not actually glowing. Because I think if I place a planet here, if I actually just place Earth in orbit around this star, it will start glowing. Let's just check. Let's see what happens to Earth if we were to place it at this distance as well. And here goes nothing. And I think I'm pretty sure it's going to... Yeah, there you go. It starts glowing and basically kind of gets overheated to the point of same temperature, 48 100 degrees Celsius, uh, which is about as close as to uh, as to actual temperature as we can get. So this is what a, a planet such as Earth would look like at this distance in this particular region of space around the star. And basically, this is kind of what maybe this planet looks like as well. It, it is definitely star-like. It's definitely very hot. And a lot of the interesting theories of solar formation will now have to be rewritten again because we never really knew that planets can be so close to these super hot stars and we never really knew that planets can even survive for so long being so hot and can even be hotter than stars. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video and I wanted to talk about this unusual discovery known as Kelt 9b. Hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully now you know a little bit more about this unusual system with this new record holder for the hottest planet out there. So let's maybe move it a little bit closer to the star, see what happens as it approaches closer and closer to Kelt 9. Maybe at some point it will start falling apart and create a beautiful, beautiful tail behind it. It's Right now it's like 6,000 degrees. That's insanely hot. That's already hotter than our sun. And uh, like I mentioned before, I wanted to show you what happens when the star actually does expand. So at some point, um, it will start grazing the atmosphere of the sun, of the star. And then, eventually, we'll probably uh, start interacting with the atmosphere so much that it will probably get swallowed by the star because its um, orbital velocity will start decreasing to the point where it can't maintain its orbit anymore. So right now we're already at like super hot temperatures burning away the atmosphere and now we're going to fall into that star as, it, as we would um, something like 200 million years from now. Didn't really work. Let's try it again. There we go. Doesn't want to fall. But there you go. It's, I don't think it's going to be that big of an explosion. I'm not sure if it's going to make this star spin so fast, but... That's kind of what's going to happen. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Space out.
And as always, bye bye. I really bugged out the game again, eh? Look at that. What a strange, unusual star this is.